Do not, do not, do not go to Mince. Dangerous place. Constantinople. Mince. Go this way. Do not go to Mince. Noodleburg. River Lintz. Boppin on Lintz. Volzano. Ravenna. Venice. Anyone could tell from the map, Mintz was a strange and dangerous place. Not even the birds flew free, they say, and nobody went there except by mistake. But the story begins in Volzano, long ago in Volzano. Gina Farina, the baker's daughter, made marvelous, meaty, most unusual, truly splendiferous pies. They were crusty and spicy with apples and quince. Ah, just the slightest hints of quince. The people came from miles around to buy them and sing her praises. But Gina Farina paid no attention. That girl has a mind of her own, said the baker, and her heart's always set on adventure. It was true. She'd count the weeks until the traveling players came, for they told tales of splendid Ravenna and Venice, where streets were rivers, and Constantinople, city of jewels, Gina Farina would listen for hours. To go with the players and travel the world, that's what I wish, she often said. What foolishness, said her father. How could a simple baker's daughter hope to join the famous players? But Gina Farina had a mind of her own. When the troop returned to Volzano, she went to the captain of players and said, The traveling players should have a fine baker. If you'll give me safe passage, sir, I'll bake my pies in return. Spunky girl, the captain thought, and what an elegant treat it would be to eat so well on our journey. Come then, Gina Farina. The day soon came for departure. Go if you must, said the baker. But always beware of a town called Mince. It's ruled by a terrible tempered prince who punishes all who displease him. Nobody ever goes to Mince, except, my dear, by mistake. But Gina Farina had a mind of her own, and she paid no attention. In town after town, the players performed, and Gina Farina made specially luscious, deliciously sniferous, truly splendiferous pies. Then one night, when the mist was thick, near Noodleburg, past Boppin on Lintz, they found they had wandered into a strangely grim, gray town. What grumpy people, said Gina Farina. This must be Mince, said the captain. They read the sign on the wall in the square. Rules of the Prince of Mince, beware. Remember by day, remember by night, in Mince, the prince is always right. All persons in the town of Mince must act exactly like the prince, and no one must ever say no to him. Obey these rules, or be locked in the stocks for a night and a day in the public square. By order of the prince, beware. The captain shuddered. Bad things happen, I've heard, in Mince, to people who dare to say no to the prince. Ridiculous, laughed Gina Farina, and she started her pies for supper. She baked the crusts, she roasted the meats, 
She toasted the almonds, candied the sweets, and sprinkled the cinnamon, honey bun cinnamon, over the apples and raisins and quince. Delicious smells on gentle breezes drifted up. Up to the prince, who sat, as usual, in the top of the castle turret. Vincent of Mintz, his highness the prince, was a vain and shamefully grumpy man. He killed a dragon or two a month and defended his kingdom now and then, but mostly he sulked in his turret and thought about nobody but himself. The people obeyed his rules, of course, and acted exactly as he did. But now his highness sniffed. Spices and meats, apples and quince, What's going on down there in Mince? Soon, Gina Farina and five hot pies were brought to the castle by royal command. Vincent devoured three pies and a half. A humph, he said. You must stay and cook in the castle. You'll bake these pies only for me. But Gina Farina had a mind of her own. Her heart was set on adventure. She looked the prince in the eye and said, No, thank you, prince. What did she say? She said no to the prince. But nobody ever says no to the prince. It's never been done before in mints. Oh, nobody, 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 nobody. Nobody ever says no to the prince. Vincent thundered, you'll cook in the castle. Ridiculous, laughed Gina Farina. I'm going to see what the world is like. Now, if you'll excuse me, sir. Then Gina Farina went down to the town to finish her pies for supper. Up in the castle, Vincent raged. And since in Mince, whatever the prince did, Mince did, people in town did the same. Vincent stormed. How dare that girl say no to me? She must be punished. He called for his wisest advisers. If she's locked in the stocks in the square, they said, she cannot bake pies for your highness. First, Give her three chances to change her mind. A uh, humph, said the prince. The wisest advisers continued, Your highness himself must persuade the maiden, for the pies would be bitter with the baker in chains. A uh, humph, grumped his highness. Make me a plan. And so, of course, they did. I'll trick her all right, vowed Vincent. Off went the prince, disguised. As a shepherd from Boppin on Lintz. Good day, shepherd, said Gina Farina. They walked together on the mountain. Just one year in seven, the shepherd declared. The fruit of these trees has a sweetness so rare that people remember it all their days. And this is the year. So surely you'll stay and bake your pies for the fine young prince. Ridiculous, laughed Gina Farina. I've a big world to discover. She looked the shepherd right in the eye. I think it's a pity about the prince. What's wrong with the prince? snapped Vincent. Gina Farina just laughed. The heart of a grump like that, she said, will certainly turn to stone. Now don't you agree? And her laughter echoed on the mountain as she skipped back down to town. Back in his castle, Vincent was dreadful, sulky by day, grumpy by night. And since, in mints, 
However, the prince was, mince was, people in town were the same. She has two more chances to change her mind, the wisest advisors declared. They reached into their bag of tricks. I'll fool her this time, Vincent muttered. And off he went, disguised as a merchant from Constantinople. Good day, merchant, said Gina Farina. They walked together in the marketplace. The merchant declared, I hear a certain noble prince will give you pearls and ruby rings and shimmering dresses of dragon's wings if you will stay and bake for him. <laughs> Ridiculous, laughed Gina Farina. Who wants dresses of dragon's wings? I want to see what the world is like. She looked the merchant right in the eye. It's such a shame about the prince. Nothing is wrong with Mince's prince, roared Vincent. Gina Farina just laughed. He's sure to dry up like a prune, she said, if he sulks all his days in that turret. Now, don't you agree? And her laughter echoed in the marketplace as she danced away. Life was impossible, truly impossible, up in the castle and down in the town. One last chance, said the wisest advisors. They had a special plan. She'll never say no to me now, said Vincent. Off he went, disguised, as a handsome traveling player. I'm handsome as can be, he thought. But Gina Farina paid no attention, for this day she was very sad. The prince was struck by the sight of her. Why are you so unhappy? he asked. Our captain of players is ill, she said and we've no one to take his place. Tonight the people will come for the plays, but there will be no plays to see. Her sigh pierced the heart of the prince. I wish I could make her feel better, he thought. But he'd never had such a thought before, and he didn't know what to do. I wonder, sir, said Gina Farina, she looked him right in the eye. Could you help us out? A uh, humph, said Vincent. Perhaps I can. I know you'll play the part so well, Gina Farina exclaimed. And so he did, until he got stuck on the dragon's wing. A uh, humph, a uh, humph he suddenly cried, for as he stumbled, his mask untied and floppingly popped away. The people gasped. The prince, the prince, it's really the prince. That player is really Prince Vincent of Mince. Happy and helpful and not at all grumpy, his highness was having a wonderful time. Well. You know how it is in Mince. The people must act just like the prince. Now really, your highness, said Gina Farina, won't you get rid of those rules of Mince? Not a bad idea, he said, and he tore down the sign in the square. Not a bad fellow after all laughed Gina Farina. A grand celebration was held in the town for many a night and many a day. Then Gina Farina said, Now I must go. I wish you would stay. I do, said Vincent. 
Gina Farina gently replied, But I have a very big world to see, and the time has come for the troop to depart. She looked Prince Vincent right in the eye. Come with us, please do, she said suddenly. The captain of players said, We would be honored, your highness. The prince looked from one to the other. Indeed, I'd like to do it. But I am the prince, he said with pride. These are my people, and here I must stay. Hurrah, the people shouted. The wisest advisers smiled, and so did the baker's daughter. And then she went on her way to wondrous adventures in Venice, Ravenna, and Constantinople, and places she'd never even dreamed of. But one year in seven, when the fruit of the trees was especially fine, near Noodleburg, past Boppin on Lintz, the air would fill with splendiferous smells of spices and meats and apples and quince. Ah, just the slightest hints of quince. For the traveling players would return. Then Gina Farina would laugh again with the Prince of Mints and the sound of their laughter had a sweetness so rare that people remembered it all their days. <laughs>